Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. This is entirely impromptu. I did not practice this. I just needed a quick tutorial video on how to use Autodesk Sketchbook so I could show this demonstration to my students. This is an example of what you can use Autodesk Sketchbook for in an art classroom. I have used it to create this drawing of an owl or a painting. And yeah, Sketchbook is actually really good because it comes with the option for layers, which means you can actually hide different portions of your artwork to see things behind it. You can layer it and it acts like an actual painting. So first off, let me show you the basics of this and let's get started and do a brand new painting so you can see how to do this. First thing you wanna do, you need to start a new sketch. And what I did, there is a menu button right there. If I can zoom in here, I can show you. So it is actually right there. That button right there. That's your menu button. So in the menu button, I clicked off of it. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit new sketch. And then it comes up with presets and everything that you need for that. If you'd like to go to the presets, I always select the highest resolution possible. That way it's not a lower quality whenever you go to print. So it's already selected. I'm going to hit create. And it's going to ask me if I want to save the current sketch, save it as a copy or discard it. I'm going to save my current sketch. And now you have a brand new, brand new artwork that you can start with. So first thing that you notice Notice all these paintbrushes on the side. Okay, there's a bunch of them, and you have a lot to pick from. You will also notice this over here. Now, if you do not see this little icon right there, whoops, this little icon right here, it's okay. What this is, this is your paintbrush and also your current color swatch. If you do not see this and you want this available, I like to have it there. You can add it by going right up here and I believe, yep, scroll over to your settings. Well, actually, on this version, it looks like it's on there automatically. Typically, there's a little icon that looks like this tool up on your menu selections. And if you scroll through that, you can click that and it'll enable it and disable it and things like that. So with this, first thing you want to do, you want to look over on this section here. And what this is, this section over here is what's known as your layers panel. So on the bottom layer, the one we currently have, it doesn't matter what I do on there. I could do that right there. And let's say that I want to just use this as a sketch. I'm going to pick my pencil tool and I'm just going to sketch on it. If I click a new layer, which is right here, and add a new layer, if I am on that new layer, everything that is underneath of it stays the same. It will not change. So it doesn't matter if I go in here and I change the color to red and I select a big paintbrush right here and then I change the size of it to massive and I decide to draw all over it. that is not going to matter at all. And the reason why is because we are on a totally separate layer. If I want to get what was behind that back, all I have to do is either click this little eyeball button right here, little icon, boom, gone. Or if I just wanted to completely remove this layer altogether, all I have to do is click it and then hit delete. That easy. And that layer is completely gone. That is what's so wonderful about digital painting. It's very similar to regular painting. You can add layers, you can blend, you can do things like that. You can add your colors. But if you ever are not satisfied with a layer, you can just wipe it out completely. It's not there. Something else that is very useful is if you have a picture or a sketch that you have and you want to trace it, all you have to do, come up here, 
to add, and then you have all these import buttons for your pictures. So go into your screenshots here, and you can select a screenshot like that. Adjust it any way you want, and hit done. And now you have a picture that you can draw on. Or if you add a new layer, you have a picture that you can trace. So with a pencil, I can come in here, draw around the beak, draw around the shapes of the eye, around this right here, and up. And now if I want to see my drawing that I had or my sketch, all I have to do is hide the picture behind it. There it is. I'm going to hide my original one too. So yeah. So let me show you the different tools that I was using throughout this video. First off, in this palette right here, and as I said, some versions of it will have this palette hidden. Others will have it shown. My version has it showing. Basically, this right here is your color swatch. You double tap on that or just click on it and you have all of these RGB values or CMYK values, depending on how you'd like to look at this, or you can custom color it. You can also have color swatches down here. Basically, this bar around here will adjust the colors that you have, colors that you can pick from. The inside block will adjust the uh, brightness or the value of that color. So you can have it be all white right up there, or you can have it be the color right there. You can have it be a duller color on this side. You can have it be black down at the bottom. So this can show you all the different colors that you have. The next option that I want to look at is the paintbrush. This right here, I currently have the pencil selected and I'm in the settings. If you go over to library, you have a selection of all the different paintbrushes you can use. Paintbrushes and swatches and things like that. There's only a few that we're going to be focusing on. One is the pencil, and the pencil works just like a regular pencil. You can have a thick pencil, thin pencil, thin line pencil, but it's basically a line that you put down. It acts like a pencil. If you go into your settings, you can see that you have different settings for it. Size is how big that the pencil mark is going to be, and you can see it right up here. So large, all the way down to tiny and delicate. And the opacity is how much color it's going to leave behind, so you can see it fading in and out. Those are the main two options that you're going to want to fool with with any of your brushes that you pick or pencils or any of that. So if you go back to your library, you see that you have a lot of different ones to select from. I personally like using this, which is called the Tattoo Inker. You can go and select one to your liking. You can also adjust all of these to different settings. So if you go into your settings, you can see you have a lot more options, but basically all you want to focus on flow, which is basically opacity, and size. So that is how you work with the paintbrush, selecting different brushes for you to use. And you can also layer these. But let's say that you want to blend some colors. So let's say I put some colors down here. I put some red and I put some purple. Okay, I have those colors. Now I want to blend it. There is a tool, which is right here, and that is known as the smudge tool. And this is used for blending. And all you have to do, you can adjust the strength of it, which is how much color it pulls, the flow, which is how much color it puts down, and the size, which is how thick you're going to pull from. And there's all different kinds of smudging tools with different paint brushes or tips on it. So you just pick the one that works best for you. And then what you want to do, you can zoom in on your artwork and you can use this tool to blend the colors together like that. It'll pull the color from underneath and bring it up so you can blend it together. Now I currently have this a little strong. I would probably want to lower that down a little bit just so it blends better, but you can see what happens. Using this very same technique, you can create lots of different things in this program. So 
I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna discard my sketch because I don't want that anymore. And I'm gonna bring this one back up so you can see it. This is another example. Example of what you can do with it. Same one we looked at before. I wanna go up here, I can go back to my gallery and I can show you another one that we have here. Very rudimentary sketch, but you can see, you can see what's going on with it. I hope this video has helped you. This is a very basic, simple tutorial on how to use this program. Basically, you don't have to worry about breaking this program. It's not going to tear up if you want to fool around with it. Go into the settings, look at different things, figure out what you like, what works best for you, and try to work with it. Now, something I will say, there is an option for using a stylist. I prefer to use my finger simply because the stylist doesn't pick up at all. Well, at least not for me. So I can put that down and it picks up. I can use my stylist, nothing. So just try, try this out, fool around with it, see what you can come up with. I hope this video, video has helped you and I hope that you make really great artworks with this free program by Autodesk.